Welcome back to Little Bits of Lisp. This time we're going to look at uh, why you would use when when you already have if in Common Lisp. So let's uh, get a little bit of code up here. Let's say we have a local variable a, and we're just going to say when a is um, greater than 5, then we want to return a, and otherwise we're just going to return nil. That's the behavior of when. Um, if the, if the, clause, the uh, form is true here, uh, then we evaluate the body, otherwise we don't, and we just return nil. So we can see here, if we make a1, we get our nil. Now, people get a little confused because this is equivalent to doing this. If um, Because the else clause in if is optional, and it will just return nil. So here, we get exactly the same results as the when. So why use the when? Uh, well, in some cases, of course, you want to make use of the fact that you have that implicit program in when. So we can say print who. And then if it's greater than five, uh, both of the things happen. So we remember the progen is the thing that gives us that imperative coding. Do the first thing, the second thing, and when you get down to the last thing, that the result of that expression is going to be the result of the entire when form, the entire progen rather. So that's one use. But in the example we gave above, we weren't doing that. Uh, we only had one expression. And so functionally, those things are equivalent. Let's bring this up again. Here we go. So what is the value of using when in this situation? Well, if you're just starting out, you might not have got to this point yet, but once you've got comfortable with the language and the syntax and things like this, you're gonna get very good at just kind of skimming over the code, especially just kind of looking down the left-hand side of the forms and getting a feeling for what your code's doing. And that ability to move quickly and assess your code in your code base, um, you know, obviously is gonna come with time, but it's very useful. When you're reading code, you're obviously having to pass it to ascertain the meaning. So when you hit an if, you're going to go, okay, this is what has to be true. And then if it's true, this is going to happen. And then you're also going to have to consider the fact that there might be an else. So you're going to look in your code. Now, obviously, it's very clear here what's going on. We've got very little, but your um, then form might be quite complex. And if you haven't quite laid your code out so well, maybe you like have to take a millisecond to find that there is no else clause. Um, when you have a when statement, your brain gets to switch off sooner. You hit when, you see, oh, if it's this is true, all of this stuff happens. And you know that the um, else condition is always going to be nil. So it's just a kind of kindness to yourself and to other programmers who are reading your code. It just helps with passing the code mentally. And so it's just kind of a good idea to do. If you only have one clause, it's, it's a kind of documentation, really. So, um, yeah, that, that's really what it boils down to. Um, we have the implicit program and we have readability. That's all for now. See you in the next episode.